Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we're talking about cast latency with RAM. Specifically when you're overclocking or underclocking and you're trying to figure out, okay, what should be a accurate cast latency if I am taking a kit that's 64 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes, so 32 gigabytes per stick, and basically changing the timings, changing the speed, and then looking at it and saying, all right, what is that latency that we want to be worried about. Now, in previous video, we did make reference to the whole idea of two different videos. One was more CPU intensive, one was more GPU intensive. And what we did here was just uh, put everything in a graph and we could see that when you don't have XMP enabled, which you should be doing 100%, no matter what, just do the XMP. We do have about 10 second difference here that really affects the speed of the RAM. However, once we enable XMP, we don't really see a difference until we get up to that 3800 CL18. Now, the idea here would then become in both videos, we were getting approximately the same type of numbers. Now with the GPU intensive uh, timeline, it was pretty much the same and it really didn't affect anything at 3800 CL18, but we do have these different numbers coming into play. And some people have been asking me, well, if, what if I can uh, get the 3600 to CL16? What is the difference there when we're looking at these two and the latency? Now, when you are setting up your timings and you're trying to just make everything go as efficient as possible, you're not gonna get a perfect timing. You're not gonna get what you would be able to get for a stick of RAM that was meant to operate at that by specs of the company. Now, in the previous video, I did talk about looking at different types of RAM and all the RAMs have recommendations. That's because when they test them, they see what is the capability and then they list those off so they can sell them at the certain price points. Again, you're looking at it and saying, is it compatible with my motherboard? Not all RAM will be compatible. You do have a QVC list that is available with each manufacturer's motherboard. You go through that and then you're able to see, hey, they've tested that so they know that it's good to go. You can use any other RAM, of course, but you don't know if it's going to work 100% and you, it's basically not you know, verified by the manufacturer. So don't be scared to buy other RAM and test it out. With the DRAM calculator, I did go through all the different settings that I listed on that chart so we can compare the latency. Uh, people wanted to see all the uh, speeds I was able to set, and this is your first one. This is the 2666, non-XMP, so you're getting a CL of 20. And again, this is why you want to enable XMP. This is at 80, and you want you really want to be under 70 here. So when we're looking at it, at 128 gigabytes, you probably won't be able to get it down below 70 based on your motherboard, um, but you'll be close to that 70 mark. Now, when you do have two sticks in there, it's a lot easier. Now, this is a 3200. I, I've downclocked the 3600 chip that I have, a CL18, to 3200 CL16, and we're down under 70 automatically. So if you are looking at it in terms of, hey, I'm going to buy a 3200 at CL16, you're probably going to be in numbers around here. Now, it's going to be uh, more catered to uh, to that 3200, so because it's manufactured for it, so you'll probably see a little bit better of a result, but you're going to see something similar. When we look at the 3600 CL18, we can see this drop occurring, and it, it's really good. Now, it is a comparison to the 3200 CL16, yes, but it's it's close, right? So it's a little bit better, but it's a little bit close. So it compares, and we're looking at it, and we're saying. These are generally the two that people are going at when you're reaching 64 gigabytes or 120 gigabyte uh, kits and, and because of the price point, of course. And you're looking at this and you're saying, will it matter between the two? So if you could save the money, you know, you can always overclock the 3200 to 3600. I, I, like I, I don't see that being a problem, depending on your motherboard, of course. Now, when you switch over and you head to the 3600 CL16 that I went in just tightened up the times, we do see the latency change once again, and now it's comparable to the 3200. Uh, this again is most likely because of the other settings on here that I need to keep tweaking, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident I can bring this down further. The reality is how much time do I want to invest in this? And, and that's the, the idea here, right? How much time do you really want to invest in it? When I switch over to 3800 and now I'm overclocked at CL18, I can see the best drop here in latency. And I, I, I want to emphasize this. These numbers are not, I repeat, are not that different. So if you're trying to tweak your system and get down to such a big drop, the biggest one we've seen is the drop 
from that close to 79 and non-XMP, and then you switch on the XMP, and now you're getting faster speeds. That was the biggest drop in the videos. That was almost a 10 to 12 second drop in the render, the experience, everything you're gonna be doing with the computer, it just, it's night and day. So turn on that XMP, and then tweak the best you can. You're not gonna get the best of best, tweak the best you can. So again, when you're looking at these kits and you're saying, hey, I'm gonna go with G-Skill and they're offering 62 times 32 gigabytes and you look at, hey, what can I get with this? They don't offer the 16 and 14 and I haven't seen the 16 offered with these. So but you can buy them in the States though, in certain places, uh, but I, I guess they don't make as much or Newegg didn't get uh, this um, shipment in. But when you do click the 16 and you do want the 64 gigabytes still, the 3200 pops up. Now we can see the price point change there. So if I just go back for a sec, that's 380, okay, versus 299. And that $80, now you're probably gonna wanna go up to 128 eventually, so that's $160 difference right there. And I can't stress this enough. Now, uh, people will ask me, what about gaming? Well, gaming, you're gonna go with 16 or 32, and you wanna go probably for the fastest speed. And you can see here that if you go for uh, 32 gigabytes, and you go for cast 14, you're looking at 239 and you're off to the races, no problem. Now, if you go for two chips of eight, which I don't recommend, again, the, the price point drops, you get more offers of what you want to be doing and you can get up to 3,800 here. So, I mean, here's 200 bucks. And so it's the speed you're paying for. And yes, this allows you to not have to overclock and do uh, the rest. Now um, on AMD systems, it's better to have all four chips. Um, but you're, you're looking at this and you're saying that's $409 for 32 gigabytes to go to CAS 14. And then the question is, is that really worth it? Because I could click on this 3600 and now I've saved like 40, 50 bucks. That being said, what is 40, 50 bucks to you? What's the budget you're setting? Can you go over? And if you do, right, who cares? This is the question. Or do you care? And then you don't do it and then you can overclock and risk going up to that. Again, get RAM that you can test. See where you can go with your system. Maybe your motherboard isn't good enough and maybe that's what you're gonna have to upgrade. Will it change the whole perspective? Now in gaming, yes, you'll get those extra five, six, 10 frames, you know, whatever the speed jump you're going for. But in the real world application for creators software, no. It, you're seeing it's all marginal with, and, and, and you're, you're really not gonna notice the experience on the long term. Now, if you're doing massive long renders and complicated timelines, you will see the difference. Yeah, you'll see that five to 7% if you're using those different uh, functions that are heavy CPU. And it's just basically gonna be like, oh, okay, I can see it now, but at that, you know, do you need that? And if you are doing that stuff, well, you should have enough cash flow to be able to uh, put into the budget so you can get the better RAM. Bottom line, budget, time, energy, money. This is what we got to be looking at. My name is Nikos. Leave your comment below, questions, and of course, check out these two videos.